guys, we are back. We're going to do a quick little Stata tutorial on making some, some nice looking and useful time series graphs. Right? Uh, so for our example here, let's call up some, say, stock market data. So we'll use that Fred use command, get data from the Federal Reserve Economic Database. And let's take a look at the S&P 500 index and the NASDAQ. So SP 500, NASDAQ COM, composite index. And those will bring in the default there is going to be uh, daily observations. And if we take a quick look here, browsing the data, we have the, uh, the NASDAQ going back to 1971. The S&P doesn't come into the data set, and this is just kind of the default settings here, uh, until up in 2009. So we've got a lot of missing observations. So we should take care of that before we try to tell any stories here with the data. So we could just use the, the command here, drop if SP500 equals equals dot. So that'll get rid of all those uh, initial observations. So we'll be starting at the same point. Uh, and then there's always uh, the possibility of uh, a data set containing a date, but a missing observation for the index or the asset price um, and that does, in fact, happen with the, the NASDAQ. So I'm not sure if we've already deleted all those when we got rid of the S&P, but let's do the same thing. So drop if NASDAQ equals equals dot. OK, so we're all taken care of there. Uh, and of course, if we're going to be using time series operators, we need to uh, declare the time series uh, nature of the data set uh, with the TS set command. And one of the really nice features of getting data directly from the Federal Reserve Economic Database is it already has a stata readable date variable, that date in variable. Um, and since we're going to be doing some graphs, it's going to be nice to be able to visually see uh, the individual dates on those plots. So we just go TS set date in. Uh, now, if we just kind of want to see the, the trend over this time period, say, of our NASDAQ index, that TS line command uh, is going to get the job done, right? So we see our uh, our observations from 2010 up through the most recent, 2019, and we see the, the overall trend. And for most of the time, that's going to be all you need to do. Right? Uh, however, we might want to do some, uh, some different things as well. Uh, sometimes you might want to uh, put specific marks at specific dates. Uh, say you want to call the reader's attention to a specific event or uh, sequence of dates. So we can put in the uh, T line command, and then you can just put in the, the date at which you want a specific marker to occur. And you need to just uh, identify it using the format of the date that you have declared, right? So in our case, Let's just go back real quick to the uh, browsing the data and just take a quick look. So our date is in day, month, year format. So say if we want to put a, a line at a specific date, doesn't matter, 15 July 2014, uh, that's going to be an option, so we're going to put that after the comma, and there you go. So again, in, the, in your narrative, you might be calling your reader's attention to that specific date. Uh, another option that's uh, sometimes really useful is that we just want to plot our sequence over a specific uh, set of dates, a, a specific subsample, so we can use the if time in option, and we just put the beginning date and the end date, right? So say we want to just look at the, the trend of NASDAQ if time is in between, again, doesn't matter for the sake of our example here, 1st of June 2011, and then ending in June 1st 2015, and Suppose, for example, we want to uh, keep in that 2014, July 15th. Uh, 
line, it would look something like that. Right? So we could look at different subsamples with that TN option. And then a lot of the times, we're going to want to put multiple series over the same time period, right? So say we want to look at how NASDAQ performed relative to the S&P 500. Well, the default with that TS line, NASDAQ S&P 500, it's kind of going to get the job done, but notice that we are measuring both of our series on the same left-hand scale here, even though the actual numerical values are in somewhat of a different scale. So it's real hard to pick up whether those uh, peaks and valleys are occurring at roughly the same point. So here's where we can get a little bit fancier. Instead of just jumping into the the TS line command, we can use the two-way graphing command, and we'll put the TS line for NASDAQ, and then in parentheses, same thing, TS line for S&P 500. But let's put the S&P 500 scale onto the right-hand axis. So we can say Y axis 2 associated with the S&P 500. And now they're going to lie right on top of each other, but the numerical values in the scale are going to be uh, again, measured on the different axes. So you can add on top of this all of the other things. You can restrict the time sample. You can put in uh, specific time lines. And then, of course, if you want to add text uh, or different features to your graph, you can go up to File and Start Graph Editor. And that's always something uh, useful to play around with. So you can add a line, and you can say, oh, what was happening here? And you could add some text. And you could just say, what was that all about? And then you can format your line here. We can put in a little arrowhead. And we can move things around. All kinds of different things you can do at that point to make your graph tell the story that you're trying to tell. So hopefully that was somewhat useful. Um, try to incorporate this in your, in your projects, in your papers. And let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Thank you.